right. I am James Dykowski, Global Black Belt for the Azure Defender for IoT platform. Um, and this section is the tuning and platform optimization. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do here? Um, so we'll get a baseline, first of all, and then we'll go through all these um, individual options to basically identify a, you know, what a customer will care about, but also optimize the environment for the customer uh, based on namings, um, multiple IP addresses for devices and, and specific IP addresses that might be in their environment and, and you know, basically their asset um, list type details. So, um, and then at the end, we'll run a last um, risk assessment report, which will bring basically all this stuff together and show how it does impact the overall environment and maybe somebody that would be coming in um, with new eyes, how they would see this um, instead of not having this optimized. So, um, so we'll go on to the first step. So the first step is pre-run a risk assessment report to get the baseline. Um, this is simple as can be. Um, you would go into the Defender for IoT dashboard and um, select the risk assessment icon over here. Uh, you can see I've already run a couple just to save us a few minutes, but you'll click generate report and it'll take a few minutes uh, just based on however many devices there are in the environment is how long this will kind of take. So uh, if it is a humongous environment, this could take upwards of 15 minutes or something, but uh, nonetheless, it will complete and good to go. So let's go to step two, review alerts. So here you can see a couple examples of things that a customer might care about, uh, in particular to an OT environment. So a stop command to a PLC, um, that would be something that would definitely be impactful, uh, especially if it's not scheduled or known that it's happening, as well as something like a firmware um, version update and things like that. So um, these are just a couple examples. Customer may care about something different and things you can search for, you can ask the question. Otherwise you can lead them in this direction. And um, I do have these examples and you can see this is running right now and pushing along. So we'll select the alerts icon here on the left-hand pane. And here you can see I have operational selected. Um, this will show everything uh, without them being selected. And so based on the person you're talking to and what they care about, you would select um, each individual side. Um, and here you can see a bunch of alerts. And if we go down um, here, you can see the firmware version, firmware version changed. Um, you can select the alert and dig in further and see if there are any other alerts that, um, that they want to manage and, and understand more about. Uh, and then if we go to the operational side, um, we can see port scans and uh, SMB login attempts, um, things like that, as well as actual protocol type um, issues that may occur. So actual BACnet uh, protocol operation failed. That's, that's a cause for concern, maybe, uh, depending on what, what the situation is. Um, and nonetheless, um, you can also see the stop PLC command was sent right here. So this is the example that was shown uh, in the slide deck. All of this is um, basically giving you the view into, not only are we understanding the packets between two individual devices, but to reiterate more, you know, we're looking inside of the actual commands, inside of the actual packets to understand what is actually happening um, to these devices and alerting based on the actual deep packet inspection of them. So uh, just keep that in mind um, as you go through here. So um, that's reviewing alerts. Um, the next phase, um, reviewing public addresses. So to find this, we'll go into the asset map. Um, you'll see here, uh, the layout by connections and layout by Purdue. You have to select the Purdue model here. Um, and that makes it easy just to find the internet up here. And then we'll export the IP addresses and then review them and then manage them um, based on what we find. So if we go into our asset map right here, um, this is the icon that you would select to layout by Purdue. Mine's already laid out in that way. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll zoom in on the right hand side here. Um, and here you can see the connections between all the devices are the gray lines. If we go all the way up to the top, we can see the internet icon right here. And you can right click and export IP addresses. 
Um, I do already have them exported uh, conveniently. If we go right here, uh, so you can see what that output looks like. Um, and so by default, Azure Defender for IoT is not going to know non-normal internal IP address um, type schemes. So they do need to be um, declared. And so in this case, you know, something like this 104.20 is very commonly as a, a public IP. Um, but say the customer says that um, this is an internal IP definitely, and they want to make sure that um, Defender for IoT doesn't declare the traffic um, to be internet traffic. So we'll go inside of our system settings here. I don't care about discarding any changes. And we'll go to subnets. Um, so here you can um, kind of manage a few things, but what we'll do is we'll add that network in. And that was 104.20, I am pretty sure. And then 250 and 251. I'll keep this as a class B though, just to make our lives easier right here. And um, added IP range, so we can easily find it. And then if it's ICS subnet, if it's not, what have you, you can select those options. We'll save and you can see changes will be applied in a few minutes. So, um, so we'll let that soak and go on to the next. All right, review notifications. So again, in the asset map, we're gonna to go to that notification icon. And the idea here is for duplicate uh, MAC addresses or maybe some hardware got updated or maybe there are IPs that are duplicates. Um, you could basically manage these notifications. Um, and effectively, it's just things that can't automatically be um, acknowledged um, or um, adjusted for inside the platform. So. So nonetheless, you just kind of review these and select, um, you know, whatever the whatever the request is and carry on that way. So that's easy enough. OK, and define subnets. So um, here you can see a bunch of um, ad hoc IP addresses uh, seemingly. Um, and then you can also see the unclassified subnet here. So the goal in this case is to identify the unclassified subnets and then give them a name, give them a label. Um, and that's simple enough to do. In my case, um, I don't have any unclassified subnets, but one thing I do have um, are unnamed uh, subnets, which, you know, if you're a user just coming into this, um, maybe into this environment from management or something like that, uh, you wouldn't necessarily know what all these ranges are. Um, in my case, we, we split them up by um, individual protocol and such. Um, but here you can see I've actually taken this 10.2.1 and labeled it DNP subnet. And at the end of the day, these are my DNP devices. So if I went up here, uh, or it's a subset of my DNP devices, you can see I have 10 right here. Um, and so I created this um, little subnet name here to make it a little um, easier to identify. So if I go into system settings and select subnets, we could see the same exact place um, that 10.2.1.0 network and the DNP3 subnet right here. So this is how you um, definitely set that. And then you can hit save right here. And of course, you're going to export and import um, if they do already have um, lists and such. So, um, so there are easy ways to integrate um, your import information if they already have that configured somewhere else. So if we fly on back over here, we could see the define important devices. So um, so we have this concept of crown jewel assets. Uh, if you don't know by now, um, you know, these are devices that, you know, if they're comp compromised, they would do significant damage to the customer's network or organization. So, and this could be revenue based, this could be safety um, concerns, um, or even security concerns, right? Just depending on, you know, if it's intellectual property that they're protecting. So nonetheless, what we'll do is um, we will select a few of these um, devices and see what that looks like. So if I go back over to my asset map on the top left here, and I zoom down in here, you can see the stars around a few icons. Um, and these are my important devices um, in my in my demo environment. So in my case, I'm trying to uh, make sure I can easily identify things that, 
you know, they show specific features and such like that. For a customer, obviously these would be more important um, um, uh, assets. So here you just right click and you can mark it as important and um, easy enough. It'll actually show uh, then as a star instead. And it's just a means to be able to just simply quickly go to the devices that you care about. If they do have red around them, then you know that there's an alert associated with them. Um, as well as if we scroll down here to the left, you can also see things like um, the attack vector simulation right here. And the base is just the name of the, the simulation I ran. And basically, if any of the devices show up inside of this attack vector simulation, then we know that that can also be a cause for concern uh, as well. And so we can actually see that one of my devices here uh, is a star and it's in the attack vector. So that would be a major cause for concern um, overall. So nonetheless, uh, just another way to, um, or a reason to have, I guess we should say, um, important devices marked um, and why, why it's a valuable feature. Okay, and we'll go to step seven, okay. Um, Import authorized assets list. So the thing about this is, um, as you go forward, um, you can't see this because I'm sure my image is over this, but on the top right, you'll see a learning um, mode within the dashboard. In learning mode, we are automatically accepting assets um, that come in and um, understanding that they're all new, everything's authorized, what have you. As you go forward, new assets that come online and when you're out of uh, learning mode, you'll actually be able to see unauthorized assets populate up in here, inside of alerts, um, all those types of things. So any new assets, um, we're gonna make sure that we control them. Um, right here, you can see that asset. Um, we can see that it's unauthorized uh, and it is simple to select this and, and set authorized to it. Um, say they're adding in a whole half of a plant or something large. Um, and they want to automate that process. Well, you can go here, import settings, and you can actually see the authorized devices import and you just simply um, select add here, browse for the file and upload it in. So then you can easily automate um, that import as well as things like Windows configuration, devices information, um, firewall rules and all those types of things. So nonetheless, that's um, how that action um, occurs and it's, it's um, fairly simple. All right, step eight, run optimized risk assessment report. So this is taking all those changes into consideration and showing how they actually will impact the risk assessment. So we would go to our risk assessment, we'd create another report. Um, I already have um, the ones downloaded and created. And so if we go in here, you know, to show the high level view of what are, what are the impacted pieces of this, um, you can see the authorized, unauthorized device here, you can see the internet connections right here. Um, you know, um, devices, um, no antivirus. Um, okay, and I guess that is it right there. You're welcome. Uh, and if I scroll down here, we can actually see, and sorry about this, um, we should be able to see the actual, okay, so here's like the DMP3 subnet that I uh, labeled right here, right? Uh, if we look at internet connections, um, we would see the 10420s in here. Um, at this point, now that we've created that, um, we've added that rule or that subnet into our local subnets, this won't populate anymore, right? The 8.8 .8 would, right? Um, and things like that. So that's kind of how this, um, you know, all of these rules and all of these, uh, all this data basically mapping their environment to, um, to the Azure platform um, helps them out and helps everybody else out to basically be able to see this report and then understand, hey, this 10.2 is the DMP3 subnet, whatever they labeled it as. And um, just anyways, it makes it more simple. So um, that is it. Appreciate the time. Thank you very much.